Did you ever have a chance to meet Mr. Lindbergh? Yes, I did. Uh, I had worked for a man at the Vought Company who knew Lindbergh very well, and we were all attending an aeronautical convention in Cleveland. And at lunchtime, my former boss invited me to have lunch with he and Charles Lindbergh, and we had a very nice uh, conversation. I had just gotten back from Pikes Peak where I raced a Bugatti, and Lindbergh pointed out that he had driven his 1914 Excelsior motorcycle to the top of Pikes Peak. And we had another thing in common that uh, I also had owned a 1914 Excelsior, which was sort of the Harley Davidson of, of that period. So you had both uh, had uh, shared the same adventure on the, the same uh, same kinds of uh, motorcycles. It must have been, I, I recall seeing pictures of that. That was quite the thing in those days, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a big, um, it was a big bike, big um, B-twin, probably about the same displacement as a Holly Hog of the present time. Uh, tell us, Bill, uh, any other things that you chatted about at lunch with uh, Lindbergh? Uh, well, Lindbergh had worked for the Vought Company, and you remember he took the F4U5 and worked on the fuel consumption and increased it so that it was a more reasonable airplane for the South Pacific War. And uh, when I was working at the Vought Company, I also had worked on the F4U5. In fact, I designed the ailerons for the first one. And um, so I was pretty familiar with the F4U5 airplane. And as I remember, yeah, we took a model of the F4U5 to NACA Langley and tested it in the propeller research tunnel because, remember, it had a large gull, and the gull had a lot of negative dihedral, and we were concerned with whether the airplane could be flown on a carrier where you were flying at very low speed and having to maintain lateral stability pretty much of the rudder. So we ran a uh, test at Langley with a propeller-driven model. I think it was a quarter-scale model. That, uh, uh, you had a lot in common with uh, Lindbergh. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> is it, uh, coincidentally and uh, in the aviation business. Uh, well, you remember when they moved the Spirit of St. Louis to the um, Smithsonian? Um, it was hanging up in the Smithsonian. And I was visiting Washington, and I knew the guy that was head of the automotive exhibit at the Smithsonian. And one evening, he took me over to the Smithsonian. We put a ladder up, and I climbed up and sat in the spirit of St. Louis. I was pretty curious about it. Well, that's what I call a VIP visitor. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, if they allowed you to get in, inside that plane. Yeah. Just think of the millions of people who have seen that. I know it. I know it. But, uh, Very so interesting. That must have been, uh, 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 sort of uh, been the uh, a childhood dream to be in that cockpit. Yeah. From back when you were 16 and you flew the Atlantic. Uh, what, what did you note about that plane when you were inside? Well, I guess everybody, of course, was curious about how you could fly an airplane that you couldn't see straight ahead. <laughs> but uh, it is a pretty narrow airplane, and uh, Lindbergh certainly had no great problem flying it. And um, after Lindbergh's flight, I hitchhiked down to Long Island, and uh, I saw the runway that he'd taken off on, which was, of course, just a relatively narrow road about a mile long. Not a very, not a very big, fancy runway at all. 